Well, packing it up, and uh, this time we're looking at Oyo 2019 and uh, the AD agenda. Joining me now is uh, Bolanle, uh, Bolanle Sarumi Aliu. Right. Hello, yes. <laughs> Basa. <laughs> Bolanle Ashabi Sarumi Aliu. Because I wanted, I wanted to see why, <laughs> why we have the, uh, the acronym Basa 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, good to have you join us. Thank you. Are uh, you governorship much. candidate for the AD? You know, your no, state, uh, National Interest Party. National Interest Party. NIP. Well, your dad was in AD. My dad was in AD in 1999. Yes, you're right. Good. Yes, so now right. let's talk about the National Interest Party, the NIP. And uh, perhaps this is quite relatively new. A lot of people thought you were going to go in the steps of, you know, of your father. Um, uh, yes, the National Interest Party is about a year and a bit old. Um, it's a crowdfunded party. Uh, I studied, you know, what their ideologies are, and it actually, you know, rhymes with what I am, you know. Uh, uh, like I said, it's crowdfunded, so it's a, it, it's a good party. It's actually for a party, you know, it's a party for anyone that wants to contest that doesn't even have any money. The forms are free. You don't have to pay for any nomination form, yep. The forms yep. are free? Forms are free. Forms are free. Currently, you, in you my just, state... You, you picked up the form just without paying anything? You don't pay. You don't pay National Interest Party because we don't want to use money to restrict you from serving the people genuinely. Because well, we, we, we need money in our politics. Mm, well, I'm, 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 I'm spoiling... No, how should I say it? I am cooking a storm in your state. Whoa. I am squashing money politics. I want to ensure that one day a teacher's son or daughter can become the president of Nigeria. That's the pace I'm, make, you know, I'm, I'm setting right now. Tell us more about the National Interest Party. And I think, because a lot of people don't, what, what's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to look at you in the NIP governorship. And a lot of people are already think that, well, they didn't buy their farms. You know, they got it on a platter. Perhaps maybe that will also make some of them say, well, there's no money. A lot of people still look out for money now in Nigerian politics. And you that's, say you're just cooking yeah. up a storm to actually that's change the, the narrative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the problem in Nigeria. We think if it's not A, it has to be B. If A has been there for donkey's years and they made no change, you put in B. Mm. B came in and they've made no change as well. Now it's time to change it. Like uh, distinguished San uh, Natasha said, it's not going to be about the party in 2019. Yes, the party would help, but it's going to be about the candidate. The people are getting wiser. People are getting wiser to realize that, look, how come is every election period they turn up with money and start sharing money? Where did they keep this money all this while? Why didn't they use it to develop the local government? So, so or the NIP, the National Interest Party, is concerned about all of that, and they say they're set to change that. Yes, we're not. We, we, you know, they decided not to use not to use money to disenfranchise people, especially female as well, because that's a big problem. Uh, uh, in 2003, I think we had about six percent women, you know, trying to contest. <laughs> You know, which, which is appalling. You know, if, if, like, like Natasha said earlier on, the statistics of women in elected offices right now is quite low, very low. Whereas we actually make up more of the votes. And I tell you, it is part of this factor, financial factor. I call it my three Fs. There are three things, you know, disenfranchising the woman from actually coming into an elected post. One is the finances which many of us were more prudent. Women are more prudent. Mm -hmm. if, I have, if, if I have so much money, I don't think I would, I would want to spend it and be bribing people to vote for me. No way. The second thing is actually the frivolous offers that we get, women, women get in politics. They look at any, any woman coming out, they say, oh, she's going to be messing around. Oh, she's this, she's that. So that alone also is also making many not come out. How is your husband taking this? Thank God he's a shy person, he's not a politician, and he knows he can't hold me back anymore. I want to serve my people. You know, I've been, I've, uh, you know, I'm, I have various NGOs, you know, I've been assisting people in need for over uh, 19 years. I'm 39 years old now. And um, I just told him, I said, look, I want to serve my people. I was born in Ibadan. I was born in UCH. I went to primary school in Ibadan, and I also went to secondary school, St. Louis Grammar School, Mokola Ibadan. Your mom is British. Yes, my so mom she, is British. So, so, she, she lived in Oyo. She so speaks she was, Yoruba yeah, more she, than me. She, she, she was here then. Is that, yes, if you say, she had you, six you, of us, you're six born children. At, at UCH, that means yes. she was here. Oh, my mom was some rugged, rugged Oimbo woman. They named her Sariyu. <laughs> she speaks Yoruba more than me. 
you can't gossip around her if I'm speaking Yoruba. Next thing she said, Mungbo. I was like, Kai, Mungbo. She understands everything. You get me? So I was born there, and I do not like the situation of what's happening to my people right now in your state. Some people cannot even afford one meal. I get calls because, look, I put my number on all my posters. I get close to a thousand calls a day. It's overwhelming, I, I, but I, I need I, it. I, I see that. Uh, you know, I, I went to your you know, social media handles and I saw your numbers and I said, well, this is actually novel. And tell us more about, you know, I, I'm trying to draw, perhaps that was why I made the earlier blonde, the, the, the blonde earlier on about 80. There must be something you, you actually, you must have taken from your father. Uh, who is a force to reckon with in our life, in, in our political you know, history. Yes, um, Father raised us well, raised us to be contented, God-fearing, and don't be tripped or, 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 or let's call it shacked about power or wealth. You know, yes, I'm from a you know, wealthy home. However, the way things went, my dad did a lot for people, for the grassroots, set many up in businesses, brought transformers into the local government. Um, however, he neglected the home a bit in the sense that we had, to, we had to struggle. So I think it was meant for this reason because that made me more close to the poor people because we lived in a giant house, you know, big house, you know, nine bedrooms, five parlors, uh, maids' quarters, etc. However, sometimes there was no food at home because my dad had gone out on campaigns. He's, you know, just dishing out the money to people, helping people, because I think I have that from him. I mustn't see someone in need. I will spend all I have to assist that person, to ensure that person is okay. I have many people like that right now in your State. They're my coordinators. Many have been jobless for five years, six years. I told them, look, support me, coordinate with me, you know, promote you know, the brand of Bola coming out to be the governor in your State, and then I would employ you once I become the governor. So right now I'm just giving them something every month to survive by. Many like How that. is Basa going? You know, because, <laughs> the, you, you <laughs> must, yeah. because the issue of godfatherism in Nigerian politics is, is also there. Perhaps you have a godfather who's helping you out. <laughs> Do you? I have God Almighty, my brother, because God started this. So he's, he, you know, he's been the one that's been advising me how to operate, how to move around. And you'll be surprised and shocked the kind of structure I have. I have about 13 honorables contesting under my party. I'm actually the Jagaban of your state right now. I'm the party leader. Yes. Whoa. Yes. So I'm reorientating them. I'm rebranding them. They're actually good, good sons from good homes. I went to each and every local government. I said, right, I need to know a, a good family in this local government. If they don't have money, don't worry. I will print him his posters. I will make his T-shirts and I will promote his brand there. But I want someone from a quality home because I know they have the crowd. Because if you've been doing well in your local government, people will know you there. So the crowd is there now. So I want to see what the masses will do for themselves. That's why I said I'm cooking a storm in Oyo. It's actually two or three different things. I want to see whether the masses will vote for Moluabi or they'll vote yet again for money. Mm. So I want to see whether they'll vote for this teacher's son, this policeman's son, this uh, pepper seller's son, this meat seller's son, because the form is free. We didn't charge them anything. They didn't pay a penny. I didn't even know them from Adam. But the fact that people told me, told me that, look, this woman is so good in this area. Anytime someone has a problem, she spends all she mm -hmm. has on it. I said, right, give me that person's child. I will sponsor the person to be my state honorable. Wow. So I have 13 honorables contesting, yes, in this new so-called party. And we have our structure. I don't know if I'm, it looks like I'm from Oyo State. Should, uh, are you? I, I think so. I should just come and just pick a form. Many people are going to come and live in Oyo State because guess what? I'm going to create a bountiful state. You know, my grandmother, she was a trader. She built over eight houses all over Nigeria and even in Ghana. Doing what? Trading cocoa, coffee, charcoal. So for you to know that there are things to be done for money to come out of the state. I won't be depending on federal allocation. Well, what exactly would you be doing? If you say you won't be dependent on I federal allocation. I won't depend on federal allocation because I will ensure jobs are being created. I will engage the ministries. The Ministry of Works, for example, why can't they be the one building our roads? Why must I bring contractors from outside to come and do it when my youths are there with nothing to do? I saw some the other day with wheelbarrows, strong, able young men. They're actually hustling to get to a bus. People want to offload some goods there. They're going to put it on a wheelbarrow. So their own empowerment right now is the wheelbarrow. How much are these guys making daily? So many of them now become my children. They say, oh, more basa, I say, yes, promote basa, put me there and see what I'll do for you because I want to genuinely serve the people. I promise God, I say, God, make me the governor of your state because we're the pace setters. Ashiwa Juniwa.
<laughs> you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some kind of, you know, certainty and assurance when you speak. Perhaps uh, you want to tell us what we don't know. When you speak to your people and you go out and they tell you, and you tell them about the NIP, uh, how do they relate with NIP or BASA? They say NIP, Nigeria for all. Our, our logo is a rainbow. Very easy. They're not interested in these big parties anymore because they've oppressed them. So they've seen it. Like, like Natasha said earlier on, yes, I also actually like the president's principles. But the problem is when a leader does not have the right people surrounding him to bring about change and they're not doing what they're meant to do, it mm. will affect the person on top. That's why, like I told you earlier, I'm training my own people. I'm rebranding them. I'm reorientating them. I'm telling them, look, life is too short. We could be dead tomorrow. We're not taking wealth anywhere. Yes, it's comfortable. How many homes can you sleep in? How many cars can you ride? However, impact on lives. I have no major investments. My investments are human beings. I've invested on many people. They've gone to universities. They've graduated. I've done many weddings for people. I've set people up in businesses. That's all I've been doing, and I love doing it. I cannot even wait to do more, and that's why I ask God to make, take me to a higher position and let me be there to take care of the people. People need to be taken care of right now, big time. That is one thing this government is missing out, welfare. Not dishing out of cash to people, no. Setting them up in businesses, creating jobs. Do a lot of partnerships, PPP, bring in, bring you know, in you, investments. You know, you know, people need to be happy. Uh, a lot of people need to be happy. And I think, uh, well, a happier nation definitely will become a productive one. And, uh, well, going through your resume, I also realized that you, you, you've actually done a lot of weddings. You, you oh, like, yes. I actually have uh, a, like a, a party planner. A bridal events bridal. company. I make wedding dresses. I do decoration. <laughs> I do catering. And I'm also a CEO of a uniform factory. So mm. we make uniforms as well. I'm a hustler. I'm a hard worker. So, so your experience uh, from running these businesses, how can we actually bring this to bear when you become uh, oh, governor of, big time. of your state? Big time. I've started businesses with little, or, you know, little money. So I know how you can start a business with maybe 100,000, even 50,000. If you can cook very well, I'll make you a caterer. You will end up printing business cards worth 5,000 naira. You start attending big events. You give them your cards and you tell them, I'll give you, I'll give you a taster. You know, come, come and taste something I can cook. So I will make sure I create a lot of CEOs. Yeah. You know, many people have jobs to do because look, I will make the money. The government will make money back from the people when people are thriving. But when they're not doing anything, where would you get the money to be able to take care of the, the, the community? And I would ensure that power is given back to local governments. Each and every local government has to function. I will oversee it, but they have to have that power back. So that whilst this local government, Akinyele, is working well, people in Negbeda will say, can you see Akinyele? They're paying their taxes and they have their own primary health centers fully equipped, not just, you know, you know uh -huh. they have their schools. No child needs to sit on blocks anymore. Children have proper classrooms. They have science labs. They have laptops to do their research on. It will make these guys in Egbeda quickly start paying their own taxes as well. Egbeda in all your states. Yes, I'm mentioning my local governments. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you afraid? Afraid. We are nation builders and we're from a warrior lineage. I'm not say? afraid of anybody. I, I, just I just praised myself. I said, I'm not afraid of anyone because my life belongs to God Almighty. And it's not going to be a do or die affair in Oyo State. Because guess what? Oyo State politics is actually a very funny one. It's a very dicey one in the sense that the people know where they are going. They will fool them. They will collect their money, but they're going to vote who they want in the end. Because the, the, the politics of your state, uh, you know, has a, a very deep history. Mm, mm, you know, sometimes, yes, uh, <laughs> yes, it is attached to some lineage, uh, you know, family lineage. Uh, sometimes it's also attached uh, to <laughs> how happy you can be and how well fed you, you can actually be. Mm, mm. You mean for the people to believe in you? Well, well... <laughs> I don't know how to answer that one yet. Say it again. No, no it's not a question. I'm just, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I wanted you to, you know, maybe you're a or you, 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 you deny that. I think the politics uh, in your state sometimes, uh, I think, has been linked to a lot of people who, you know, have deep pockets. Uh, they feed a lot of people, the masses, to the extent that perhaps when time comes for election, these people whom you've been feeding, they just remember that, okay, almost are me. Dikaka di koko. Dikaka di koko. Let's go vote for <laughs> Hopefully the people will choose the person that will take care of them. Uh, everywhere I go, when I go on radio or go on TV, I say it, look, God should please choose the person that would definitely take care of the people. The suffering in the land is too much right now. People cannot afford one square meal daily. Many can't send their kids to school anymore. Education is not free again. They say it's free, but it's not free. 
Health centers are run down. We don't even have the proper equipment. I'm from, you know, I told you my mother is from England. And I know how the country there takes care of the people. And the, and, and, and the country has been led by a woman for decades. Many countries now have decided, look, we need to involve women in this mission so that we can work together and move Nigeria forward. Nigeria has to work. That's why I'm in this mission, because this is my home. Even when I travel to England, my dad, I'm counting my days. I'm like, uh, I want to go back home. Where's my mother? Where's the, uh, I'm counting to come back home. They're like, they call me Mama Africa in my home. They're like, Madam, can't you just stay in the comfort of the United Kingdom? Can't you stay in a place where light is there 247? Can't you just stay in a place that, God forbid, you fall ill tomorrow to take care of you all the way? I'm like, no, I can't. I can't because of those suffering. I can't because of that 12-year-old hawking on the streets that's been raped because she's selling pure water to support her family. I can't because of those boys that you call area boys that have no future right now because no one is thinking of them. No one is creating jobs for them to do because I will ensure they work, but they'll get paid and it'll be something tangible. You, you should also be thinking of having the support of these people, especially, you, you talked about the area boys, and sometimes some people say politicians, they all have thugs to succeed in elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you have thugs in your payroll? No, I don't. I don't have thugs. I don't even have the police right now. So it's just me and my God. <laughs> and these this so-called area boys, they're my sons, you know. I, I meet them in their local governments. You know, they're like, Mamawa, Mamawa. I'm like, yes, don't let them use you in 2019. Many have died on the field. I told them, I said, I, I said, haven't you lost many of your friends because of elections? They said, yes, they have. And did these people care? They said, no. But they brought money and you got the money and that was all. Where was, I mean, where's the money today? They said the money is gone. I said, so don't let them use you again. Let them go and bring their own children to come and carry guns for them and come and rig elections for them. Don't rig any elections. Let God choose who God wants into power. And that's why I'm not afraid about the money issue because, look, I voted for Jonathan, President Jonathan. He didn't give me a penny because God wanted him to be there at that time. I voted for President Buhari. He didn't pay me a penny. I voted in Maitama, Ghana Street. Even when he won, I, I, I entered my car. I was praising. I said, say Baba, say Baba, all over. So that is to show you that when God finally wants to put his chosen one on that seat, I will get there. Have you, have you, have you moved your, vote, vo, your voting oh, yes, center yes. back I've, I've to your state? I've moved, moved it to your state when I started this this year. Yeah. <laughs> and your people, uh, do they have voter card? In your state? Ah, you'll be surprised. The most illiterate people have their cards. The so-called area boys have their PVCs. They flash it. They say, Mama, don't worry. I say, don't sell it. They're buying it right now. Some people are buying it for 150,000 Naira. Isn't that wickedness? Mm -hmm. Why would you buy somebody's voter's card for 150,000? I tell them, I say, look, if you want me to share money in this community, when I become the governor, you're telling me to go and reap that money back. So I'm telling the masses that you're the ones teaching them also to go and steal when they get there. Because you've told them you don't want to hear them unless they bring money. So do you want me to go and steal when I get there so I should dish money out now? They say, no, we don't. We don't. I said, good. So let me just spend the little money I have. We'll buy our biscuits, our minerals, you know, we do our mobilization. It's very funny, but my brother, you won't know my strength now until March 2. 2019. Now, now, let's talk about debate. You know, that's one area that uh, is not in the culture of many politicians in Nigeria. To turn up. Uh, to turn <laughs> up. Uh, uh, they don't even want a debate. And uh, Natasha said she had to pen down her, her you know, manifesto. manifesto. Uh, tell us more about some of your manifesto and what you'll be talking about when you uh, stand before other contestants <laughs> to s talk uh, on the day of a debate. Currently, we have a debate coming up at Trenchard Hall in UI on the 3rd of December. And you know, it's not been lifted up yet. It's December 1st. I can talk in depthly about my manifesto. So I won't be able to share it in detail here. One, I don't want them to know what I'm going to do on that day. I want to surprise them. But my manifesto actually is my heart. My heart to the people. It forms my heart. H for the health care and social welfare. A for agriculture, because I'm going to go into a lot of mechanized, mechanized farming big time. There's so many, so many farms that have been left. I will ensure we create farm settlements. Many would love to go and live there because they will have their little community school, they have their health centers, and they will have their little homes built by the government, and then they'll have their farms so that they can farm stuff and we we'll sell it, both mm -hmm. locally and internationally. You understand? And I'm going to bring a transparent government, one that will be very accountable. They'll be surprised. I'll be like, look, this is the money we made in Akinyele. This is the money we made in uh, Egbeda. This is the money we made, and we're going to use it for X, Y, Z. And then the biggest thing I'm going to do, data collection. Mm -hmm. I want to know how many old people I have in your state. How many babies are being born in the hospitals? How many youths are employed and unemployed? How many, 
I want to know because if I don't have these figures, I won't know what sort of plans I can give them. I study social work and welfare. So when it comes to doing all these things, I know it naturally. And I also study social policy, psychology, and sociology in the UK. So I want to know how many people I have in the state. So that by the time I tell you I've, I've spent one million on one million elderly people, you say that's true. We counted that, yes. We're one million and she spent one million. So are you looking to get an, a department of social you know, affairs or social works mm -hmm. when you come Social in? welfare. We have that already, but I'll make sure we train them on what they need to do, especially to ensure that the people's lives are not you know, as hard as it is right now. Everyone in your state, you know, I want to make sure they're not too poor to live. And the, the, and, the, and the seniors, you know, now we're talking about the older ones. What's Less your them. what plans do you have for them? My brother, I even I even dreamt it. I'm going to make sure I create a lot of what's it called mobile clinics. Many of them can't even commute to the hospitals anymore. Many of them are not mobile. Many of them cannot even afford the transport fare. So we're going to have these buses turning up. They're, they're going to say, Basa, Basa is coming. So all the old people in all their areas, they will all come out. They will have, got, they will have gotten messages on their phone that on Wednesday at Kinikor Community School, turn up for your dentistry, uh, sorry, dental care. So you're talking your about eye a, a care. mobile clinic? Yes, mobile clinics that will do their, their will check their blood pressure, find out who, who's got diabetes, you know, give them, you know, the dentist, uh, clean their teeth you know and also the eye care as well so all those things will be done for them and I'll make sure they have free health care I'm thinking of the age gap maybe from 60 upwards or 65 upwards and then we'll do this means tested thing that we have in England I will know who is actually living below the bread line to ensure that that person gets lifted up immediately because when you don't take care of the people in society they will start doing bad things that's where you have all these evil things happening around and people committing suicide. I never knew Nigerians committed, you know, committed suicide until when it started happening just a few years ago. We that we love our life, they even do it like jokes. I say the poorest man self doesn't want to die in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Right now people are killing themselves. You know, your states, many women are getting what they call Bomuli Lantern, high interest loans. Once I'm the governor, I'll ensure that doesn't exist at all because I'll gather them in groups. Mm -hmm. Ten women will give them a grant, start your business, you, you use it for three months, use 100,000 for three months, give it to the other woman pass it around like that, for them to use it to build their businesses. Once you're done in one year or two years, give it back to the government. Why can't, be that, you know, why can't that be done? I'm just, you know, amazed. You're the only woman. Actually, I think there's another woman in another party uh, in Okyogu. I, I, think there's, uh, I think there are about 40 of you. Female Guba candidates? No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm talking uh -huh. about the candidates. Oh, in yes, yes. We have about 46 candidates for six men men and guess what all of them no deputy woman all male 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 i want to know why in 2019 or your state why haven't they ever elected a deputy governor to be a woman why haven't they allowed a woman to be a deputy talk less of a governor so now we're not looking for deputy anymore we're looking for that governorship seat so that we can deliver and take care of the people well best wishes as we go but uh, in closing very quickly here uh, now tell us what if and a lot of people really don't like this. <laughs> what if you don't win? Uh, would you leave politics? Well, I can't. I can't. I will, I will stick to my humanitarian side, you know, material side, and take care of the people and continue what I've been doing. And I think I'll start that farm settlement because I like the idea. It sounds like a cozy, cozy thing to do. So I won't quit. I won't quit because as I've started along the line, many people believe in me. I have loyalists right now. They're not asking me for a penny, but they live and breathe, Bola must win. They believe in this dream so much. So why would I quit because of them? I can't, and I can't be bought. Man, thanks for speaking with us, and uh, we'd like to say we wish you well. And you. Uh, well, once uh, it's been lifted, you should be able to come back again so that we'll look pretty much uh, into the NIP agenda. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap on the show today. Uh, with it, uh, well, we'll give them more time. And uh, two women have just... Uh, well, told us their plans, and I'm so excited about the belief and strong faith in what they hope to do for their own uh, state, like Oyo and the Kogi Central. Well, for next week, I just have a big surprise for you. Should I? Shouldn't I? I'll keep that on the wrap. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>